There are 24 point of view characters in A Song of Ice and Fire, each unique from the next and with many being introduced in each new book in the series. Today I'm going to be going through and ranking my 10 favorite point of view characters from throughout A Song of Ice and Fire. I'm not going to count prologue and epilogue point of views because those are just one-off chapters, but overall each of these point of view characters tend to bring their own unique perspective along with whatever plot they are spearheading in the story, and it really can vary from individual to individual what character is going to be better, at least in terms of what they find more entertaining. So, I'd love to hear your own thoughts as to who your favorite point of view character in A Song of Ice and Fire is. Be sure to let me know if you'd like to. And yeah, let's jump into the list, starting with number 10. Number 10 is Sir Davos Seaworth, the Onion Knight. I think he's a really interesting point of view, as he is both a knight, a hand of the king, but he's still someone who was lowborn initially. He provides a very interesting sense of perspective given his position. He very much understands where he comes from and is able to kind of appreciate what he has a bit more than some of the others who might have been kind of born into royalty. What's more, he tends to focus on Stannis' storyline, which at least for me is something that is a massive plus uh, going forward because I just love Stannis. He's one of my favorite characters. And moving forward into the Winds of Winter, it seems like he's going to have a really interesting plotline there, particularly with going to uh, Skagos, the cannibal island, in order to hopefully pick up Rick and Sark. And it'd be really cool to check out what exactly is going on on that island. And it seems like it'd be a real change of pace from any of our other point of view characters, at least at the moment. So yeah, overall, Davos is quite good. Also, honorable mention here for Melisandre. She's only had one chapter, but I think she has a lot of potential as a point of view character in dance and also has similar focus on the Stannis story. For number nine, I'm bending the rules a little bit and including both Aeron and Victarion Greyjoy. They're both very similar, kind of two sides to a coin. They're brothers and they both have eyes on the same plot lines. But overall, I think that they have really interesting uh, ideas and I think that the insight into the Ironborn plot is really, really cool, especially with how much Euron seems to be a focus of the story moving forward. What's more, Victarion seems to develop more and more as we get to know him, uh, as he kind of starts out as a character, you do think, oh, he's probably going to die this book, but he ends up surviving through both Feast and Dance, and we know he's at the beginning of Winds, though it seems unlikely that he will survive that entire book. What's more, The King's Moot is one of my favorite chapters in the entire series, and speaking of some of my favorite chapters, Aaron's one revealed Winds of Winter chapter, The Forsaken, is among the best in the entire series. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend that you do. It's incredible. Great imagery, great uh, plot development. I, I just love it overall. But yeah, overall, these two uh, Ironborn brothers are tied for my ninth place on my list of favorite POVs. In eighth place is Brienne of Tarth. Brienne wins the award for the most improved on reread point of view. When I first read Feast, I was bored senseless by Brienne's chapters, which I think is kind of a common reaction to reading that book, as after the last action-packed Storm of Swords, her plotline can kind of be a bit dull, a bit plotting, with just kind of wandering around the Riverlands and trying to find Sansa and Arya. Overall, though, I think that on reread, it really lends more depth to these chapters, and it's got a really concrete arc to it, which I love. Furthermore, I think it's very uh, thematically concise, and I think it ties into the overall themes that Martin wants to convey with the series in a great way. I think Brienne is perhaps the most direct commentary on Martin's theming of kind of the tragedy of war for the common people that we've seen so far. And for that, I really, really like Brienne's chapters, especially in A Feast for Crows, which is the only book we have her in a point of view as so far. Number seven is Sansa Stark. Sansa is an incredibly interesting character to me, just generally, as I think she's had a very unique plot line as compared to all of the other Stark kids having to fully deny her identity in a political sense rather than Arya doing it in a magical sense to become a, a spooky assassin. But I do love her perspective in King's Landing early on in the books. And what's more, I love her development into Elaine, into A Feast for Crows, and even in the Winds of Winter sample chapters. I think it's really interesting to see how she develops and how she kind of changes to her circumstances and adapts into a more uh, adept political player than perhaps anyone else in her family ever really has been. It's nice to see her kind of break away from the uh, political ineptitude of her father, though it might be something of a dark path should she follow in her mentor Littlefinger's footsteps. 
Number six is Jon Snow. Jon's biggest strength, in my eyes, is having a very concise story in each individual book. I really like the kind of ideas and themes that are present throughout each individual Jon storyline and how they are distinct from one another. In the first book, it's all about finding a place where he belongs and joining the Night's Watch. In the second, it's about the journey beyond the Wall and eventually joining the Wildlings. In A Storm of Swords, it's about defending the Wall from the Wildlings and eventually being elected Lord Commander. And in Dance, it's about the duties that being Lord Commander tends to impose upon Jon. However, this is knocked down maybe a place or two because of some of the chapters in A Dance with Dragons have a tendency to get a little repetitive just because there's so many of them. But then again, they build to such a tremendous climax with Jon's death in the final chapter of A Dance with Dragons. So overall, yeah, Jon, great point of view character. That's why he's number six, ending the bottom half of this list. Coming in in fifth place is Tyrion, and a lot of my thoughts from Jon carry over to Tyrion, particularly the fact that he has been knocked down a couple places because his chapters in Dance are not the most fun to read. However, generally, I will prefer reading a Tyrion chapter over reading a Jon chapter. They tend to be full of politicking and wit, which are the things that I very much like in my Song of Ice and Fire, and Tyrion is just some of the wittiest uh, dialogue generally in the series. And I think that overall, in the transition into the later half of the series with the Dance with Dragons, he becomes a much more interesting character. However, his chapters are not necessarily as fun to read. Though I do really like his early chapters in Dance with kind of going along uh, the river in uh, Essos and figuring out the entirety of the Aegon cause as he goes, which really is a good display of his intelligence. Fourth place goes to Theon Greyjoy. Theon starts out in A Clash of Kings as a pretty good point of view character. He's he's probably above average, but not significantly so. However, his arc in A Dance with Dragons is one of my favorite in the entire series. The fact that you think he's dead for two books and then come back to him this kind of emaciated wreck of a person, this shell of who he once was, and essentially being able to be alongside him as he finds his way back to what he once had been, it really it leads to a fantastic character journey throughout A Dance with Dragons. And that is the main reason Theon is on this list. I think that his chapters in Dance are some of the best character work that Martin has ever done. And I think that Theon internally is such an interesting character with his memory issues and with just the general layers of trauma that have been stacked upon him by Ramsay. I think that overall Theon is a, a fantastic character. And I do also really like his sample chapter in Winds, though I keep talking about those, but Theon's is also probably my second favorite of the revealed Winds chapters. Diving into the top three, Jamie Lannister takes our third place spot. Jamie is the recipient of one of the best character arcs in fiction, in my opinion, and he is perhaps the largest benefactor of George R. R. Martin's style as a gardener writer, as if you read those initial letters in which the series is outlined, Jamie is supposed to be something of one of the main villains, whereas in A Storm of Swords, once we're finally in his head, we really change the way we see him and realize how he sees himself given the events of the past and what he had to do in order to save the populace of King's Landing. What's more, his arc in A Feast for Crows is incredibly interesting, both kind of separating himself from his family's legacy and trying to rebuild the uh, image of himself as it stands with the common people, while still leaning into more of what his father would do, really le leads to an interesting balancing act. And I'm really excited to see what happens with Jamie and with Brienne in The Winds of Winter. Cersei Lannister takes second place. She is one of the most entertaining characters I have ever read. Just the levels of delusion on offer here alone are fantastic to read, and generally her chapters in King's Landing in A Feast for Crows are completely hilarious. I also love the amount of politicking present and having to navigate the kind of fallout after both her son's death and her father's death, and just seeing how Cersei ends up picking up the pieces. She also has one of my favorite opening lines to a chapter in the series, and especially being the first chapter in her point of view ever, it's really enlightening to her idea of the world and how she ends up thinking of her place in it, that being, she dreamt she sat the Iron Throne high above them all, which is generally both a fantastic sentence and a great introduction to Cersei's point of view as a whole. So yeah, overall, Cersei is far and away my second favorite point of view character in A Song of Ice and Fire. Before we get into the top spot, I do want to give an honorable mention to 
Veramir Six Skins, the prologue point of view from A Dance of Dragons, which I think is a fantastic chapter, but because it was a prologue, it was not uh, eligible for this list. It is incredibly interesting. It's a great way to set up events with John, with Bran in this book, and I do think that it would have probably slotted in just under this list had I counted epilogues and prologues in the list as a whole. Number one. Lord John Connington. John Connington has only had two chapters so far in the series, but both of them are among my favorite chapters in the series. They are incredibly interesting the entire way through. I would argue that the reveal and development of the Aegon cause is the most important development in A Dance with Dragons, and I think that getting direct insight into that by giving us the perspective of the Hand of the King was a genius move from Martin. What's more, I just love John Connington's perception as a whole. I think he's an incredibly interesting character. And once we first get into his head in the chapter of The Lost Lord, we note that his demeanor has changed a lot from when we were observing him as Tyrion. As that chapter goes on, we see Aegon's plot develop before it ends with the fantastic reveal of his grayscale. And we fully realize why his demeanor has changed so much. Moving on into his second chapter... That being the Griffin Reborn, we get to see the taking of Griffin's Roost, and we get some history and flashbacks to Robert's Rebellion that we haven't really had since the first book and since Ned's point of view. Overall, John Connington also has some of the most poetic and beautiful lines in the entire series, and he is the character that I am most excited to see in The Winds of Winter, both in terms of where his plotline is going and seeing more of his point of view and hopefully getting more insight into Aegon into his relationship with Rhaegar and overall into John Connington's psyche as a whole as this uh, doomed man. Generally, I just have a soft spot for doomed characters in general, so it's really no surprise that John Connington is taking my top spot here. So yeah, what do you think of the list? I'd love to hear your opinions, your thoughts. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, who your favorite point of view character is. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, do all that. It really helps me grow the channel, and I really appreciate it. So yeah, Thank you all for watching. I should have another video out on Sunday, and yeah, I hope you all have a good day. See you later.